Roller coasters are a pretty common fear, and there are multiple reasons for this. First of all, they are designed to look intimidating, especially massive high-speed attractions like hypercoasters. Secondly, they're unusual. To those who don't ride roller coasters that often, the sensations you experience when riding them are new and mysterious, feelings you may have never felt before. This causes us to question how certain elements will feel, and to humans, the unknown is generally pretty frightening. But another reason for this fear is one less grounded in reality, the view that roller coasters are unsafe. Now, there are reasons for this. First, coasters are, in a way, designed to look unsafe. Dropping 300 feet or hanging upside down for several seconds would naturally be dangerous in another circumstance. But a main reason for this belief is how coasters are portrayed by the media, which is a whole different video in itself. Popular culture has sensationalised and exaggerated roller coaster safety, or I guess the lack of it. I mean, when was the last time you saw a news article talking about how safe a roller coaster is? All of this culminates in a pretty widespread view that these massive metal machines are fundamentally dangerous, and that view is what I'll be disproving in this video. I firstly want to preface this video by saying that I am in no way saying that roller coaster accidents aren't impossible. Of course, they do sadly happen sometimes. That being said, this is in the same way that plane accidents aren't impossible, or being killed by a vending machine isn't impossible, and you still use them, right? For comparison, the chances of being killed on a roller coaster are 1 in 170 million, which is about 19 times less than being struck by lightning twice. That is crazy to think about. In the United States alone, approximately 300 million people ride roller coasters per year, and on average, around 0.000002% of those people were injured, including minor injuries. I think you understand what I'm getting at here. Roller coasters are one of the safest types of entertainment, and if you're still not convinced, then here's some ways that roller coasters are designed to keep you safe. The first potential roller coaster danger we're going to address in this video is derailment. With modern coasters hopping over violent ejector hills and flying through twisting inversions, it's obvious that there are measures to stop trains from derailing. This is all down to the wheel assembly. On all coasters, the wheel assembly is arranged with wheels on top, side and bottom of the track. The wheels on top, or the running wheels, are the main wheels to bear the weight of the train, and those are the ones you would expect all coasters to have, otherwise they wouldn't roll or post. However, the wonderful catalogue of wheels doesn't end there. There is another set of wheels, generally the smallest, positioned underneath the rails. These are called upstop wheels. Before these were developed in 1919, Coasters couldn't navigate inclines that were too steep or go through areas of excessive negative Gs. However, after these little guys were created, they kept the coaster train from lifting off the track by locking it vertically into place. And finally, the last type of wheel is the side friction wheel, which rests on the side of the rail. Normally, you would find these on the outside, but on certain coasters, such as those manufactured by Arrow or Old Gen Vacoma, as well as some woodies, these wheels are placed inside the track. The purpose of these is pretty much the same as the upstop wheels, but on a horizontal plane. These side friction wheels keep the train centred on the track, stopping it from derailing. All of these combined create a wheel assembly that keeps a coaster train firmly locked in place, making derailment close to impossible. If that wasn't enough, coaster wheels are replaced multiple times per year and inspected daily by professionals, so any wear or tear is immediately picked up on before any guests enter the park for the day. So no, you won't be experiencing Final Destination 3 in real life anytime soon. Another common fear when talking about roller coaster safety is having your restraint unlock and flying out while the ride is in motion. 
There are a few reasons why this isn't really possible. There are two types of restraint used on modern coasters, and those are hydraulic and ratcheted designs. Hydraulic restraints make use of locking fluid in a hydraulic cylinder to create infinitely adjustable restraints. Once this fluid is locked, it prevents the restraint from raising again until the restraints are unlocked. Ratcheted restraints use a cylinder with grooves around the outside, with a pin that can fit into the grooves. As the restraint is lowered, the cylinder turns and the pin falls into one of the grooves. As you continue to lower the restraint, the pin falls into more grooves until the restraint is at the desired tightness. The design of the grooves and the pin makes it possible for the cylinder to turn one way, but once the pin is locked inside one of the grooves, it cannot be turned the other way, making it impossible to open until the restraint is unlocked. This is what creates the clicking sound as you lower your restraint on certain coaster types such as Bollinger and Maviard inverted coasters. Before a coaster is dispatched, it must have its restraints checked individually by ride attendants before it's allowed to leave the station. This is ensured by these workers having to press buttons to tell the ride that it's ready to go. This also ensures that the ride ops are standing in a safe place away from the moving vehicle. Only after all ride attendants are happy can the train be dispatched. But what if the restraint comes undone during the ride? Well, lucky for you, that's... well, it's impossible. Once the restraint's locked and the train leaves the station, they are stuck like that until they come back into the station again, where the ride operator unlocks them. These restraints physically cannot unlock until they are back in the station again. The only other time where your restraints will ever have to unlock is if the ride gets stuck on the lift hill, mid-course or brake run, and the train needs to be evacuated. In that case, a tool, key or pedal can be used by a ride operator to safely free the guests stuck on the train. But what about the restraints themselves? How can we be certain that they are large or tight enough to protect you? The first thing to be aware of here is that these coaster trains have been designed by professionals. Secondly, coasters are tested for weeks before they open to the public and use water dummies which simulate the size of riders. As long as you're within the ride's set height limit, then you'll be perfectly safe in whatever restraint the ride has. These can come in all shapes and sizes though. For example, over the shoulder restraints are most commonly found on looping coasters and cover the rider's entire torso to keep them secure. However, the placement of these either side of your ears can be uncomfortable on rougher coasters, so nowadays many coaster manufacturers will opt to use lap bars which secure you at your waist. These are more comfortable, more freeing and equally as safe as their over the shoulder counterparts. Finally, it's worth mentioning that some rides feature seat belts, which attach from the seat to the restraint. These don't do anything, and I believe the only reason why they're there is to make guests feel safer, even though they're completely safe with or without them. Before I get onto the final point of this video, here's a quick fire round of some more coaster worries. What happens if I pass out on a ride? This is perfectly safe, but if you do pass out on any ride other than Intimidator 305, I mean Project 305, I mean Pantheria, then you should probably drink some water because you are most likely tremendously dehydrated. Could my head or arms hit something while riding a roller coaster? Again, as long as you stay under the ride's max height limit, then you should be good. Ride engineers use clearance envelopes during testing to make sure no one will hit any theming, trees or other pieces of track. Will my legs hit the track on flawless coasters? I have actually seen people say this before and obviously the trains are designed so they're high enough that no one's legs will hit the track. What if I get stuck upside down? This is impossible with the way the elements on all coasters are designed. If a train slows down at the top of a vertical loop, for example, then the train's centre of gravity will be either on one side or the other. It is impossible for the train to miraculously balance itself at the apex of a loop. Can the train roll back? Very rarely, especially on launch coasters, it is possible for the launch to be too slow and for the ride not to make it over the next element. 
If this happens, then the launch track will act as brakes to slow you down. Then you'll either be relaunched or, in some cases, evacuated. Also, if you get a rollback, then congrats, you are now considered a god to theme park enthusiasts. Right, hopefully that answers some of your questions. If you have any more, feel free to ask them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer. Now it's on to the final big fear that lots of people have when it comes to roller coasters. Crashing. Two trains colliding can be a major worry for some people, but coasters have systems in place that fully prevent this from happening. The most major of these are block zones, which in simple terms, use systems that stop two trains being in the same area of track at the same time. Therefore, if a train was to stall or roll back, another train won't collide with it. This is done using block sections, which are almost like checkpoints which divide the track into different areas. A block section could be the station, the lift hill, a mid-course break or the final brake run. If a train reaches one of these points and sensors tell them that another train is still occupying the block zone ahead, then the ride will come to a stop. Often this can happen if the ride system detects a train when there isn't one there, but better safe than sorry, right? This is why you sometimes see videos of people being stuck on roller coaster lift hills, or news articles saying that people are left suspended in midair. This is over exaggerating, since stopping on the lift hill is not a malfunction, it's a safety measure. If you get stuck, ride teams will either work to start up the ride again, or evacuate you if necessary. And if you do get evacuated from a coaster's lift, then be grateful because some people pay to do that. Keep in mind that as well as all of the tests that are taken by the parks, rides are also inspected by external companies to make entirely sure that you are safe when riding. So there you go. That was exactly how parks and manufacturers keep their roller coasters safe. I hope this video has opened your eyes to all of the hard work and effort to make your day at a theme park the safest it can possibly be. Also, I hope that this video has encouraged you to look beyond your potential fears and worries and allows you to experience some incredible rides without worrying for your safety. Because roller coasters are fantastic. Finally, if you learned something from this video, then drop a like and subscribe because I'll be posting more videos like this one as we move into 2025. Take care and goodbye.